Welcome to Terrain Creations. Today we're going to make a basic wall and a sprue tree. So we'll start with our epoxy. We're going to go through the tools used here. Olfa knife and our extruder. In this case it's a little green aluminum extruder I bought. My DeWalt handheld drill. You can also use the handle on the extruder, but I don't. I use the drill. It's easier on my wrist. So we're using a half inch square extrusion tip. Oh, pardon me, <laughs> quarter inch square. So grab some of the putty. You're looking to get roughly the same size chunks. I like to do it by rolling it into a ball. Grab yourself some part two. I find on this stuff the uh, part two is a little thicker. If you don't have equal amounts, just even it out. So go ahead and see if they're even and then take your lids, stick them back on your epoxy A and B containers and then get them out of the way because, well, they're in the way. So I found to mix this epoxy fastest and best you basically roll it into two strips. Now I'm working around the camera here. Normally I'd be all in right on the front without anything in the way. So like this, stick them together, break them up, make lots of layers and then just knead it a bit. The instructions for this stuff say to get an even uniform color and that's not all that hard to do. It does start pretty thick when it's cold so you got to work it until it warms up a bit and just keep rolling it out into a long strip folding it over and rolling it out again. Knead as you feel necessary. So we're going to take a check on our color consistency here. Looks pretty good. Give it a little more just to be safe. If you don't get it mixed up evenly, it just takes an irregular amount of time to dry fully. And that's annoying. You've got wiggly pieces and hard pieces stuck together. And it's like, no, let's skip that step and just make sure it's mixed up good. So here we're going to try and make it fit in the extruder. You got to roll it a little bit skinnier than the tube so it doesn't stick in there when you try to shove it in there. Remove the nose plate and the rear plate which houses the screw. Insert your putty and then press it down in there so that it doesn't get in the way on either end. Find your appropriate extruder tip, in this case a quarter inch square. Screw down your head plate. 
then you're going to spin it down so that only the end is sticking out. This came from storage, so it wasn't done yet. Now I've actually managed to unscrew my head by using the power drill, so I have extra step here now. Screw the head back on and stick it in the tube. This one looks like there. Get your thread lined up nice and screw it on tight. And then just put it in the chuck of your drill, tighten it up. Go ahead and grip your extruder quite tight. Set your drill to forward rotation or, you know, inserting a screw rotation or drilling a hole. And then remember to give yourself a little travel as it extrudes. This allows it to come out at a relatively even density. That becomes important, especially when you're trying to stack walls. Some parts will be less dense than others if you don't do this step. Grab your Alpha knife. Extend the blade, cut it off. Normally at this step I'd actually fully clean the unit, but we're going to skip that for the video because we're talking about building a wall, not extruding stuff today. So we have our snake. Square your snake off. Again, camera's in the way for this. Normally I set it right on the edge of my mat and slice straight out. And we're going to do half inch, which is that square size, bricks. I thought I'd just speed up this section, you know, so we get through the clipping a little bit easier. Watch where you put your fingers when you're cutting these. They have a tendency to stick to your knife, so you know, watch out for the edge buildup there. Go for a pretty even sized cut. And always point the knife, knife blade away from you because, ouch. If you don't do it, so since we're working with only a small amount of epoxy, we're going to get a small amount of bricks. Leave that last chunk, don't cut it up. If it's square, you can make more bricks. If it's not square, who cares? You can turn it into something else. So now we're going to need a piece of paper. Do not try to work this stuff, especially if you're going to let it harden on your mat. Determine an area that you want to cover with your bricks. I like to define in inches, and if I overrun, remember one simple thing about terrain. When you're building a dungeon or a diorama or something, you're often going to have to exceed an area to frame an area. So if this is three inches long and I overrun by a quarter inch, that's just where the next wall joins into it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make some bricks. We're going to make a wall segment. The wall segment is going to be about three inches long. Since we cut these in half inch chunks, we've got to make some quarter inch chunks to make the off pieces. Do not cut your finger off while you're trying to do this, obviously. So for a too high wall, we're going to need probably two. So let's make two. Take a full size brick, square off the cut corners. They never seem to come out perfect. This isn't clay. It doesn't slice cleanly. It has a tendency to grab your blade and squish. So square them up a little bit before you strap them down. Now unlike clay, this stuff actually sticks quite well after it's hardened. But remember to press your edges together just a little bit so that you have some physical joining. Uh, it is a putty, so it will stick. Just keep adding bricks until you have reached approximately three inches, including the one that's left over. Notice how the bricks have remained about half an inch, but are now squished a little bit further together. 
because of placement and handling. Add your little piece there and you will find that you have a slight overlap. Not much, just a little bit. Start where you finished and work your way back. It's sort of like building a real brick wall except very tiny. As you go along, it'll join up to your paper, and this is good. You want it to be stuck to your paper. You also want it to be easily rotatable and something that you can view from either side while you're working. That's why we stick it to the paper, number one, so it doesn't stick down to your board forever, which it probably would do until you scraped it off and broke it. And number two, you just sand the paper off. Uh, after you've ripped it free of the sheet. So as your wall gets higher, you'll find it distorts a little bit. That's not going to fit on there because it's, well, it's too long. So what we're going to do is take a look at it, measure it, and say, ah, oh, it's too long. You have a choice to either cut it off or leave it. I like to leave them. Add some crenellations. Crenellation should be centered on a brick transition, as you see here. The spacing for a 28 or 24 millimeter model allows one model to stand between each crenellation. I also feel free to use these as dungeon walls. Works great. Okay, so as you can see, we have some bricks left over. Before we move on to another project, we're going to build a sprue tree. A sprue is the leftover thing that uh, your minis are held in before you assemble them. So we're looking for a piece with a flat point on it. So find a used sprue, i.e. one that has nothing left in it. Like this one comes from Sigmar Minis. So we're looking for a point where you have an L. That's the point you want there. This is going to be a fairly tall tree, uh, taller than a 24 millimeter mini standing. So what we want to do is cut it flat on the bottom with our sprue cutters. And then we're going to look for a nice large area to keep. In a future video, this will be covered in foliage after painting. So this is going to work for a sprue tree. We're going to make one with approximately one inch base. That's not going to tip over constantly. So we need to uh, assemble the correct amount of epoxy to base this tree. That much ought to do it. Roll it into a ball working out all the ridges and separations and see that it fits within a one inch square. Good. Now stick it on some paper so it is well retrievable later. Press it down. You're looking for good base adhesion here because you're going to be pulling on this quite a bit. Just stuff your sprue in there. Now fold it over. The epoxy will stick to itself, so work it really good on there. This base will be literally welded in here as the epoxy sticks to itself, and because we have an L shape on the end, it's keyed in there as well. So it's not going anywhere when you pick it up or tip it over or drop it off the table or something. It's going to stay in its base. So that's a sprue tree base. Let's add some vines. We've got some extra chunks. Let's use them up. To make a vine, just roll out a piece. In this case, a single brick's worth, one quarter by half inch. Just let it whip. There you go. Lots of pieces now. Just pick what you want out of there. So we're looking for roots on our tree. And roots, uh, well, they're not straight, so 
just bend it all over and stick it in there. The roots preclude the use of vertical grass, plus you can't really hit vertical grass on this because there's going to be foliage in the way. So this is a really tough design. This is a design you can play with um, and borrow out and expect it to come back in one piece, or roughly one piece. And you're going to have to paint these over completely with your base layer paint. So make them nice and um, defined. Tiny little roots are great, but you got to stuff your nose so close to the ground, or I guess a gaming table, to even see it. Big roots are better, just because you can actually tell what they are. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video presentation of how to stick a wall together and how to assemble a sprue tree. Good night.